This is an interesting LED material that tries to present itself as an alternative to neon. But um, as I've said before, if you want neon, the best thing to get is actual neon because although this can produce straight lines, well slightly wavy straight, line, straight lines, and, and it can produce good curves and you can get a modest sort of radius in it, um, it's never going to create the three dimensional effect of actual neon. But look at it for what it is, a linear LED lighting source. Uh, let's take a look at the alternative because the original was um, traditional LED rope light and well when you look at it you can tell it's LED because it's very dotty. However, this gets round that to a degree by creating a very linear line of light using um, a much deeper trough below the sort of section in the front and diffuse it. Now I'm going to plug this in and I'll warn you in advance that because I'm using an iPad and because Apple doesn't seem to give a shit about people in 50 hertz countries, this is going to look flickery. Yes, it's looking flickery because it's not 60 hertz and well, gee really should upgrade from an Apple product, shouldn't I? But there we have it. It does look linear, you're just going to have to believe me, it looks very linear indeed. And the way it achieves it is like this, so let me just pop this end cap off, let you take a look in the end, and then I'll doodle it down, what's actually inside. So what we've got here is a channel of white plastic. And it's notable that there's a little gap at the bottom here. I'm not 100% sure if that's purely to facilitate the moulding or to help. It probably is to help in the cutting positions. It probably, you know, now I think of it, it is to help in the cutting positions because the, there is a mark on this that I'll show you later. I'll try and show you it later where you can cut it every metre. But it's got that section there and at the side of it, well, the whole thing is actually then another moulding material of a diffused plastic like this to give their curved front, but that then comes right down into here too, and even goes through the bottom there. And at the side of it is a strip of LEDs, and it's a flexible strip of LEDs, and the fact it's mounted sideways gives it that sort of sideway flexibility. Uh, the LEDs appear, I've not opened it yet, but we will open it, we will take a look inside. The LEDs appear to project sideways, and in doing so, they create a large diffused hot spot of light down here that then gets diffused out the way and it ends up in a very passable, you know, for a straight line, it's very passable, it's a very diffused line of light, in this case, warm height. For the correction, there are bus bars, two of the wire bus bars that are so common in the, this sort of material. Um, I'm just knocking lots of stuff off my bench at the moment. Uh, and they're mounted right at the side, just behind the tape. And what comes with it, and it's quite odd, um, it came with two of these, although it only comes with one end connector. It's that system whereby, and it's not polarised this time effectively, you can just shove this into those, uh, make sure it's unplugged first, you could just shove it into those uh, little bus bars up the end, uh, press it in, and then once that's been pushed into those bus bars down the end of the wires, you then put this plug connector on. Let's get this off. Oh, I've just pulled it off completely with those. Hold on one moment, I'm just gonna get my long pliers and whip that out. So it makes contact with the sort of plug, and it's notable that the orientation of these pins, well, I'll draw it because it's, it's gonna be much easier if I just draw it here. If I look down the end of this, Um, the pins are very obviously biased right up to one side. And that means that uh, even initially when I got this, I was thought, oh, blind, which end do you connect it then? And it doesn't actually matter which end you connect it because if I uh, just half-heartedly push this one in here and I was to connect uh, this plug to that in the correct way that the things line up, then the brown lead in here would be going to the bottom. But if I was connected to the other end with the way it's pushed in, and connect it so it does line up, then a brown would be at the bottom again. So um, it means that no matter which end you put these pins in, because of the very sort of specific uh, orientation of the bus bars, it doesn't seem to matter. As long as you line those pins up with those pins, the socket up with those pins, it's always going to make that connection and the brown is always going to be at the bottom. I'm guessing that's positive. I will find that out later. I could experiment. No, we'll find that out later. Uh, so brown is at the bottom, so brown bottom, just remember that, brown bottom, like diarrhoea. No, perhaps that wasn't the best analogy, but brown does come at the bottom in this particular version of tape, so it kind of gives you confidence that you're not going to accidentally connect it wrongly. 
This, incidentally, has the two core lead going in, and then it's got the bridge rectifier. It's the same old system, it's the bridge rectifier, and then these are definitely going to be the strings of LED tape connected to the bus bars along the length, uh, positive at one end, negative at the other, um, and just a, a series string of LEDs. And you do see this stuff in shop window displays. It's used a lot just to, as a cheap alternative to neon, just for window dressing, because it's much less breakable than neon. But um, you do see whole sections gone out, you know, you see like dead meters, or in the case of the low voltage stuff, you'll see sections of maybe about eight LEDs have gone out inside for a 24 volt supply. Now this stuff also came with heat shrink. Let's get this out of the way so we can bring the, bring the brightness back. You also get heat, bits of heat shrink with this to seal, although to be honest I'd be wanting to glue the ends on. And it also came with these two aluminium channels. Now I bought two meters of this, and that means you get one aluminium channel per meter, which isn't really quite enough to support it. You're going to end up with a very wavy line, it's just going to be dipping down in the middle, but uh, it's a start. So um, let's take a look inside. So first of all, if I uh, just take this off camera momentarily, measure out a meter. What I can see here, I'm not sure if you're going to see this, let's try, let's try and make it visible by putting some light underneath. Is that going to make it visible? Can you see that dot there? That, I think, is the marker for cutting it. So let's cut it right there. I'll get a pair of snips and I'll just lop it right there. I'm guessing a knife would be better for cutting that. And I'm guessing then that if I shove these pins up here, that should theoretically be a nice round meter for the, you know, that this whole section should light. If I've cut it in the wrong place, only a part of the section will light or nothing will light. So let's shove that in. Let's try this out. Hopefully that's gone into the little bus bars inside. I'll soon find out when I plug it in. This is where softening the plastic would have been useful particularly given the low temperature in here. Oh, I'm screwing this everywhere. Oh, this isn't working at all. Oh, it's not working at all. Bear with me. This will work. I'll make it work. Oh, there we go. Right, so noting that this end is completely open and therefore live, let's plug this in and see if it lights. Yes, it has. So, uh, yes, it is. It cuts exactly on that sort of dot. Which is useful, and uh, it's more interesting to note that, that it produces this little line underneath as well. Uh, you can't really see that, can you? Yes, you can now. You can see that line flickering and shimmering away apple style. So now I've chopped that up. Here's the meter that I've cut off that will also be a complete meter. Uh, so let's investigate opening this up so we can take a look at the tube inside. The only way I can really think of doing this is to get a knife, shing, and then slice into it. Slice deeply into that plastic and scrape it away. Uh, yeah, I know some people don't like the, the fact that I use sharp knives on the channel, so I'll maybe just pause, because this is going to take a while. Um, and I'm going to try and cut into this. Look, I'm cutting to myself. See, I'm cutting to myself. I'm cutting to my thumb and not to my chum. That's always going to end badly, isn't it? So um, I'll pause momentarily to save you the the blood fest, but we can already see an LED visible down there, so one moment please. Well I have to say, that was tough getting that out. Uh, so tough that I had to crack out the big boy chib and that's always going to end in tears. And it did, it was right, it, it does stab your thumb. But that's okay, I've got full engineer auto repair functionality so that will heal up quite quickly. The construction of this is interesting. I've taken a little sandwich a slice here and I took a photo of it and zoomed up, so here it is. Inside is pretty much like a section of the LED tape, the mains voltage LED tape, where it's got that sort of C form with the bus bar uh, wires put in. I've tested the bus bar wires, they look like copper, they're not. They're copper coated aluminium, they, they failed the flame test where they droop with the, with the combustion. Um, and uh, so it's got those embedded in, and then I'm guessing they may have put a, th a slight sleeve around that. I think they've sleeved it so it is effectively a standalone tape that is then injected again into another extrusion with the outer of this white sections and this uh, diffuse section that comes down the side. So it's quite a complex construction. The LEDs do point sideways. This is the LED tape. It's quite a close spacing. It's got lots of resistors along its length. 
And the statistics for this are, let me pull this in, let me bring in some more information. The 240 volt version or 220 volt version has 120 LEDs along its length. Now, it's actually got two sections of 60 LEDs. And as is so often the case with uh, these LED strips, I'm looking for the joint. It must be in this bit here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? There it is. As is so often, every half metre they've got a solder joint connecting the two sections. So it is basically 220 volt sections in series. So it's got 120 LEDs divided across the whole lot of the metre, and it's 60 parallel pairs. They're actually wired as little pairs of LEDs in parallel here. Like this uh, sketch at the bottom here shows the LEDs in parallel with resistors between each pair, but not every single pair, it's sort of random along the length. The resistors are 68 ohms, and along the length there's th 36 of those, and it adds up to 2,448 ohms. The tube light, this material runs at about 7.6 watts a metre, and at 33 milliamps. But that's, because the LEDs are in pairs, it's 17 milliamps per LED. And rather nicely, unlike the other tape that was overdriving the resistors, these ones, I'm not sure they're rated, but... Um, I, th I reckon that at just 0 0.075 watts per resistor, that's not going to stretch this too much. It's going to actually run fairly cool. And that's going to result in a good long lifespan of, of this material. But, um, the channel in here is actually hollow. I could actually grip the LED, and as long as I held the section straight, I could drag it out in one continuous section. I did chop it at one point when I was actually trying to open it, because it really is very... Very tricky to open, it's very tricky to open indeed. The end, the cutting section, they've literally, it looks like they've taken a sharpie and just put a dot uh, at the cutting point and it did tally up exactly with the material inside. Quite neat. So yeah, this is quite interesting stuff. It's quite complex. Um, it works, it's not super efficient. It's not as bright looking as if you were just viewing these LEDs directly because that light is basically providing a sort of sideways pointing light source that fires into the sort of diffusion material. And then it's got the, um, I'll show you the, the real thing, that's better, isn't it? So it's pointing sideways into the diffusion material and then just creating a hot spot of light down at the bottom here that will then diffuse up and actually light the sort of curved section in the front. So if you can imagine, it's almost like a, one of the big 10 millimeter diffused LEDs where it's got a huge dome with the chip at the bottom, that's effectively the effect it's giving, but the sideway pointing chip gives a greater diffusion. Um, so yeah, it works. It's quite neat. It's a uh, symbol to connect. It's got that annoying flicker. Now, I did try the 240 volt stuff on 120 volt in my, well, as near as the 120 volt could get in my shaver socket, which never gets used for shaving. And it lit very dimly, but very flickery, because it was only lighting for a very small portion of the sound wave. But, um, this stuff, I believe, is also available in 24-volt um, versions. Not sure how easy it is to get in that form. Uh, but that would make it, potentially, you could run it off a DC switch mode power supply, and then it should not flicker at all. This stuff has that slight uh, shimmer to it, because um, the LEDs are not lit for the whole of the sine wave. Um, so... Um, that is a slight drawback to this. It's got that slight flicker. But having said that, even actual Neon has that slight flicker to it because it operates the sort of same way. It goes out at the zero crossing point area. But yeah, it's interesting construction, very rugged construction. It will actually take a decent amount of bending because the tape itself is extremely flexible. You know, it shouldn't really be put to too much stress inside that material, uh, particularly with that open cavity that it can slide backwards and forwards in. So, interesting stuff. It does look pretty good, but not quite a replacement for an Ian in all applications. But certainly for a borderline, it, it's a lot simpler and cheaper than, than the real thing.